It's been a couple difficult months so far for the Catastrophes. With over a dozen members and Beep being our most recent recruit, the gang is starting to become quite a force to reckon with. We're living in the Sten Desert, currently swagged up, and in our last episode we set up a peeler machine and then gave Beep some chainsaw arms. Beep and some other gangsters are pretty low leveled, so in this episode our goal is going to be training some of the gangsters left at Bad Guy City. And meanwhile, Beep is going to load up on some iron to do some strength training. I do this with a lot of characters, I'll send them with a backpack full of iron while we carry someone like Choppy so that they can earn strength experience as fast as possible, while also say if a dust bandit group sneaks up on them, then at least Choppy's there to take care of it. Now meanwhile, the rest of the gangsters will be wasting time trying to sell some of the materials we've accumulated over at Bad Guy City. And after we were able to do that, I wanted to send them over towards the grid. Last video, we visited the grid with B01 and Toro, but neither of them had enough levels in lockpicking to get the chests there. So I basically had to go back this episode to claim the rest of the loot and see if there's maybe any research books we could get. Thankfully, the 19 levels we obtained in lockpicking by training were just enough to get into the chests at the grid. This was great as we got three ancient science books, a cool pole arm, plus some other loot. Now just beside the grid is the crater. This place is pretty dangerous with a lot of bandits and beak things roaming the area, but I really wanted to go in to go into ruin there. We'd have to be very careful to not get party wiped, as beak things can't eat our skeletons, but we still could eat Toro. The best way I find to handle it is trying to lure a couple beak things at a time, as getting overwhelmed by them is just hell. So we'd slay three to five of them at a time, and after over a dozen beak things, the gangsters were pretty injured, but they were still in fine enough condition to make their way up a ramp of a ruin. Once they got there, they entered the building and immediately they woke all the security spiders in the complex. Now while the security spiders are pretty strong as they're meant to guard the sacred and ancient loot that's held there, the gangsters were just strong enough to end up taking them down. I made sure to loot all the corpses for the skeleton muscles as well as this kills the spiders and it gives us 2k profit from each one we loot. We searched for any loot that we could find on the first floor but the only useful things we could find are some tools. Now it was on our way to the second floor. There's another few security spiders here, but there really wasn't any loot. Now the third floor, this is where it's at. After healing up from the second battle, I had a gangsters head to the top floor to clear out a skeleton and the rest of the security spiders that guarded the loot. We were just strong enough to pull it off and we can now begin looting the top floor. All the white crates have some kind of loot in them that spawns in them sometimes, and there's also all of these locked chests for us to try to get into. Now there's a lot of stuff in the chest, there's supplies, trading goods, armors, AI cores, this was a huge score for the gangsters. The very last chest had a 0% chance to be lockpick, but thankfully we ended up finding some tools on the first floor so B01 was able to crack it open for a few ancient science books and some more loot. Looking just outside of a ruin, we could see many battles begin between travelers and and beak things. Looking just outside of a ruin, we could see many battles going on between both travelers and beak things. Since the group was so injured, I really wanted to get the heck out of here and go back to Bad Guy City. Meanwhile, Beep was still training his strength level in the border zone with Chompy, but he ended up getting knocked out by some dust bandits finally. For Beep, we need to level up mainly strength, martial arts, toughness, and a few other skills to increase the overall effect of our unarmed combat, as right now Beep's getting his ass kicked. Now Bad Guy City was still being targeted by local Sheks, but we were doing really well now, with a lot of the gangsters outranking the Sheks now, and with the help of the local settlers and the mercs that we hired, these battles were like no longer crippling us at least as much as before. Beep got back to Bad Guy City with a strength level of 25 and then started to train up martial arts while he was awaiting the rest of the top G's to get back home. By afternoon on day 59, the top G's arrived back and I had them start training as well. Beep needed a little bit more time to develop so it wouldn't really hurt if we spent a bit of time increasing and everyone else's levels and after two full days of training i had my gangsters fill up on iron and copper so we could now have everyone do some strength training together the top g's would bring beep along and now begin to wander throughout the border zone and train all of her strength levels they kept on finding an odd random group of dust bandits which they were just absolutely crushing before they ended up making their way into vain right now i have a main goal of reaching mongrel if you remember in the last video there's a pretty cool like walker skeleton there i came here to find beep but firstly we found a cool guy named Walker40, but I couldn't interact with him until I gave him a new CPU. Now that we have a CPU from the ruin, I wanted to go find him. But, of course, as typical it is in Kenshi, when I got to Mongrel, he was nowhere to be found. Last time when I went there, the guy was basically everywhere. I, I couldn't go anywhere without finding him. But now, I was playing Where's Waldo 
with a dude that probably didn't even spawn. The only thing I ended up doing was upgrading our armor, so I wasted like five more minutes playing Where's Waldo looking for the skeleton walker guy, but I couldn't find him, so I just gave up and went back home. If that isn't a perfect representation of how most of my plans in Kenshi goes, I don't know what is. At about four of the bad guys' city gangsters load up on iron and other supplies and then head to Squin so they can make us some money. And by day 64, the top G's made it back to Bad Guy City where they were going to heal up before heading over to the Dust King Tower. With seven strong gangsters, B01 was confident they could take down the weak faction easily with a proper strategy. Also, uh, someone remind me to get limbs for Stubbs. It's ironic because his name is Stubbs, but he had no arm for like two episodes and now he's missing a leg and I didn't replace that during this episode so somebody please remind me. If not, I know I'm going to forget and he's just going to be like a perma torso for the next 10 or 20 episodes. It was 4am the top G's arrived at the Dust King Tower with a huge gate out front they decided to sneak up slowly. With nighttime being on their side the Dust Bandits didn't even see it coming so the top G's picked the lock of the gate and then opened it up. The Dust Bandits surprisingly had no one guarding this gate so when they opened it up the battle was on. Right away Panur Tan got knocked out but we still had six ultra strong gangsters on our side. Beep was hitting a lot of flashy moves now with his chainsaw arms but he was still getting hit quite a bit. Then the Dust King ran down the tower. With everyone else inside fighting the Dust Bandits, B01 and his bodyguard Toro would attack the Dust King from both sides and eventually all of the bleeding and injuries would lead to him being knocked out. This means we had won the battle. I'd heal him up though because I still need a thumbnail photo so let him get back up real quick but you know, we had won the battle, the Top Cheese took down the Dust King. All that was really left now was just to explore and loot the tower and the corpses. The Dust King had lots of good equipment for us to take off of him, and then plus his 35k cat bounty, we're going to be making a lot of money from turning him in. Inside of a tower, there isn't like a lot of research books for loot, but there's quite a few specialist grade items and repair kits worth taking. On the third floor of the Dust King tower, there's a bunch of prisoner cages with one prisoner inside. Human talks to him, and the guy is super excited, like he hasn't had human or I guess skeleton contact in years. He says he snuck out one night to meet up with a girl that he was writing letters to and sure enough he got ambushed by bandits and held for ransom. The dude is broke so nobody cared and he ended up staying locked there for a few seasons. So Yuman tells him he'll break him out. First Yuman unlocks his shackles and then sets him free from the cage and the guy's so grateful he joins the gang right away. Now it's off to Squin, with the dust bandits taking down, they'll slowly start to weaken across the land and turn to chaos without their leader, which will be great for us. The group arrived in Squin on day 66 and went into the police station to turn in the Dust King. With this, we'd gain 35,000 cats and gain some relations with the Shek Kingdom. I figured this was like a great milestone, the Sheks would finally be like, hey, you know, it's the dust bandit killers, what's up guys? But no, there's still this random Shek who's just being an absolute asshat. Once we talked to him though, he started just shivering like of all the people we had talked to him we had cat our new recruit he was telling him off this wimpy shek asked cat to turn a blind eye but after a verbal altercation a battle begins but this immediately alerts for shek guards and raises an alarm there's no way we could fight the entire squin military force so we needed to escape the gang would run down near the rear gates and split up cat dragged a majority of the shek guards meanwhile everyone else was running as fast as they could but eventually toro was knocked down along with cat b01 couldn't just leave his bodyguards so he stopped running and began to fight off the Shek guards along with other gangsters. B01 fended them off until Zagan ran up with his super range shooter ability and picked off her remaining Sheks attacking him. We were now enemies to the Shek people and more guards were on their way so we needed to keep repelling them until we could pick up our injured and escape. During the escape Kat and Toro ended up being picked up by some Shek guards. Normally I would just bail them out right away but now that we're enemies with the Sheks this means we can't go into Squin without a fight. The remaining gang knew they couldn't just break out their companions with only the six of them so they waited for a sign. Toro would free herself and attempt to find the gear that the Sheks took. She couldn't find anything though so she tried escaping through the only exit, the front door. Now since she was injured and she still had all of the loot from the ruins, she couldn't outrun the Sheks and they ended up taking her down and re-imprisoning her. The other top G's could hear the whole ordeal happen and they knew they needed to go back to Bad Guy City and then come back with reinforcements. After spending months as a prisoner at the Dust King Tower, it's pretty funny actually if a cat just got freed from there but now he's in an even worse place because now he's in the Shek City of Squin and he's in jail. 
This guy must just be like so miserable inside, man. <laughs> Along with this though, B01's main bodyguard was now imprisoned as well, so they would need to plan a breakout mission in order to get back their gangsters and save them from their doom. That'll be in the next episode though, so if you enjoyed this one, remember to leave a like, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff to help me out. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers, so an early thank you. We might end up hitting it before the new year, which would be super swag. As always though, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.